Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, async flows in Node.js and this video is very closely related to the earlier uh, video that I created on uh, threads in Node.js. So we're going to discuss async flows right here and just to do that I'm going to open up my Visual Studio Code and I think you can just anywhere type in code and the current directory. So I'll just make a directory right here first of all. I'll make a directory for async flows. You can just name it anything. It's just a directory and you can just go into this directory and then open up your code editor. Now this is uh, Microsoft's editor which is good for JavaScript and uh, HTML, CSS. But since it is good for JavaScript, I'm going to write some code in Node.js as well. So let's just type something on Node.js. The first thing that I'm going to do for you is just try and do a file uh, read kind of an operation, right? Let me just call it uh, file read JS, and this is this is the place where I can write Node.js code. So a little on how to write Node.js code, um, and specifically on file system. So the first thing that I'll need to do is import the file systems functionality, for which I'm going to write var fs is uh, required, which is more like an import statement in Node.js. And since fs is a default module available, um, it's just automatically going to get it for you. If it is not available by default, then you'll have to, uh, you know, first do an npm install for it, and then you'll be able to get that particular module. But uh, after you've got this module, you can just type in fs dot read file, and let me just choose the read file sync, which is the sync version of read file. And then I can just read anything. So I might just uh, read within the files directory, which I'll create. And uh, within the files directory, I just wanted to read maybe a file node.txt. And so once you read the file, you may get the contents back. Uh, and I'm storing them in the contents variable. And I'm going to console.log the, the contents. Or I'll just write a string contents. Uh, of file and what are the contents that I received right here? So, could be contents. Now, so it's going to read from the files directory, uh, which I'm going to create right here. So, I'm just going to create here a files directory and in that store a new file and I'm going to call it node.js text or node.txt. Maybe. That's good enough. So, you know, once this is created, then I'm going to copy and paste some code from here. So, let's just go down to Node.js website. So, I'm not going to Node.js.org and copy up some text. This is holy text. I mean, it's just like a in-depth uh, stuff, but I'm just using it to, you know, put it into a file. That's all. So, this is the text file and that's what I want to read in Node.js. And now how do you run this? So there is a terminal right here. There's a shortcut to it as well, but I'm just going to show it how to run an integrated terminal within Visual Studio Code. And now that you have the terminal, you can just simply type here uh, node and the name of the file that you want to execute, which in our case is file read.js. And you'll notice it just gives out to your buffer because uh, you know, the files here are read as buffers. So I'm just going to append this into a string. And I think that should do good. And it just reads the contents of the file right here. So that's how, you know, you're going to read the files. And uh, the the file system module is, is just a core library and available to you. You can just import it and, and, and just do this operation. But what is so different about Node.js? Uh, we don't typically write the sync versions of any operations. Uh, so let's just understand, like, you know, how do we do uh, a synchronous call and what is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous calls? So I'm going to create another file right here and uh, let it be JavaScript file. So I'll be just calling it as async flow.js just to explain the differences between synchronous and asynchronous flow. So let's just try and do some operation. So we'll just call a method, uh, do some uh, 
operation and uh, you know do operation is just a method here available so you can just like do some operation as a function and this actually you know kind of does something and then returns a result so it just returns some result so I just you know put it into some result and the result of this I mean calling this function can be stored into a variable maybe and I can just do a console.log here So if you just want to run this here again, you can just type in node and the name of the file and you'll see, you know, it's just a synchronous call right here. But for a synchronous call, um, we have a problem with JavaScript. We have already discussed it is a single threaded model. And what if, you know, this, this some operation is some um, heavy uh, lifting operation, so let's make it heavy operation maybe, just to denote uh, it's just doing some heavy lifting. And uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go to the, I'm going to simulate this. So I'm just going to find the sleep version of uh, JavaScript. And uh, so I think this looks good. Just a method which just check, you know, the current uh, or adds to the current date milliseconds. That's what it seems like. Let's just try. So I'm going to copy this and uh, make it like a function only. So, you know, both of these are valid syntaxes of a function. Uh, this is a variable which is assigned an anonymous function, while the function name is already explicit rate. So there's no difference. Uh, you can just use both the approaches. Now, I'm, I'm just going to call this pause operation and it's pause com and I'm going to sleep it for a little five seconds just to see the delay you know is there a delay in getting the result of the function and you already see there's some delay now I think it's just uh, we have to wait for five seconds and it just comes out here so you know that's just the perfect thing that we needed now just in case it's an heavy operation um, then is the point like you know does it really impact our program so I'm just going to console.log uh, right here and just write starting here to denote that we are starting an operation and uh, before we read the result, or maybe after, we just write here, you know, continue. I mean, if this operation was some, you know, heavy lifting operation, and considering there's only one single thread in JavaScript, then we should have continued to the next line. And let's see if this really happens. So I call it the async flow. But, you know, since this is blocking it right here, and this is just for five seconds. Uh, this this particular operation acts as a synchronous, you know, operation, and it just blocks till the time it finishes and returns some result. Will not be able to proceed ahead. So what can we do about this? Uh, so the first thing that we can, you know, think about uh, this as a function is we can just use a set timeout in JavaScript, and set timeout is a special function that can execute a function and that's what I'm writing after some interval of time and that is not really important because even if I give it zero seconds it's going to put it in a different method stack altogether so let me just call this heavy operation in a set timeout like we don't really want to continue just then because it's a heavy operation we just wanted to do this and the code should execute and move ahead you know from here it's just we as async call and the code can just move on from here. So let's see if this is really possible. And I just call up the node async flow again. You notice the code has moved up. It just prints result right here and the and then they continue. The problem is that we've not got a result. But uh, this is really important in Node.js scenarios where we cannot afford to block this single thread available. And so we just need to write everything in the async flow. So how do we get the result back? Well, there is a solution, and the solution lies in callback functions. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a argument right here, and just call it callback, just to denote it's a callback function. And uh, now we assume that we're going to pass a function from here, uh, maybe something like this. So 
I can just type in console.log. So after, you know, callback done. And when I want to just, you know, return result, instead of returning a result, and this is not going to work because set timeout, it just creates a different method stack. And you cannot just return a value from a set timeout because we assume that, you know, this happens at some later stage, some later interval. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, instead of returning a value, I'm going to invoke the callback function and pass some result, whatever the result that we compute out uh, within the callback function. So the real functionality is, I mean, we, co we get a callback function and we're passing some string value from here as a result. Now we'll accumulate the result right here uh, and maybe just display back the result. So maybe just write the same console.log that I've written here. So move this and write over here. Now notice the special syntax uh, of a callback function now. So it's just some uh, function calling that's not going to return a value to you, but a callback function is going to be invoked once the job is done. And let's see if we really get the result right now. So I'm just going to again execute the same statement. Now we get to the continue, but it doesn't really return us a result. Only when the result is completed, it just calls back the function. And that's what, you know, uh, that's how callbacks are associated with uh, asynchronous flows. And that's how we do it in, in, in JavaScript. I'm not saying set timeout is the best way to do it, but that's just one of the possible ways of doing an async calling. Now, this is the same way uh, that a file read operation actually happens, and most of the operations would happen in Node.js. So I'm just going to go here and just modify the syntax, and it's going to now look very familiar. So I'm just going to type in fs.read file. And if you would notice read file, I'll just uh, pass the file name, which is just the same. So let's say files dot slash files and node dot txt. And this is the function which can take an error. I'll tell you what error really means. Or, I mean, since I'm using containers, these are just variable names. So I can just use them on my own. And I'll just type in here console.log. Notice the callbacks are always nested. So because, you know, this is like a function and which has been uh, created as a callback. This function gets callback when there's no error and the contents have been read and as passed as a second argument here. So when, you know, this runs, the benefit that I have is I, I still can do console.log starting right here. And maybe after this, At the end, I'll just type finished and just run the road file read.js. And you'll notice what? So the execution uh, from line number five, uh, you know, it came down to six. And six, because it realizes it's an asynchronous call, and because all the operations in Node.js by default are asynchronous, and uh, it just reads the file in its own. Uh, timeline but before it, it it is finished because you know it just takes a little time to read the file it just moves on to finished and then when it is done a callback function is invoked and you can get the results now error is a special thing so we can just do it in our scenario as well like in an async flow if there is some error maybe i, I can just pass an error here because ours is a you know a success case i'm not really passing any error and then i can just take an error comma result so and just run the same thing. It's just, uh, you know, that we've not passed in any error. Just in case, you know, in your doing something, you encounter an error, you can, instead of null, pass an error value. And then the callback function can really take care of the error handling scenario. So let me just call async flow again, just to uh, see, you know, how similar these operations are. And uh, it just gets a result after, after some time. So very, very similar to what we have done. Let me just copy and paste uh, this piece of code into uh, the file system and I think you'll notice how uh, you know similar these operations are so this is like our own creation and and you know this really exists as uh, as, a, as a read file operation one of the problems that we encountered though in doing 
uh, these async operations is if you want to do an operation one and then operation two for example if i just wanted to read node txt and then just read another txt uh, if i just do it right here like this that really means that you know this is a parallel flow and if i just needed some ordering within them so let's say this is one dot txt and this is two dot txt and i always needed two to be read after one then i'll have to nest this as part of the callback so that you know this execution happens first and once the callback is done then this happens so if you go down on this uh, piece of problem then we just get into an async or what we call as uh, callback hell because you know the code is, seems nested now and just consider i just needed to go two three levels further down on this nesting this will start to look ugly but there are solutions available to this and i think hopefully we'll in some other video discuss those solutions around the callback help. Thank you so much for watching.